Hey guys, it's Hannah and this is Bookworms Talk, and today I'm going to tell you what my September random favorites are. First off, I would like to apologize for sounding slightly raspy, manly-ish. Kitty cats, we gonna do this again. Did you come here? Okay, come here. So Olive might be joining us, I woke her up, she was sleeping. I'm sorry. You sleep all day. Anyway, like I was saying, I've been getting over the cold, a cold, not the cold, I don't, uh, for like the past <laughs> going on two weeks now, um, I, say, I stay sick for just ridiculous amounts of time. I've already been on so many different medications and just, no, <laughs> I stay sick for a long time, so I sound slightly mannish, but it's okay, we're gonna look past it. I guess I should start with my books first, right? That seems logical. Firstly, I would like to talk about how to Kill a Rockstar by Tiffany De Bartolo. I love this book. I have a review for it, which I will link on this side of the screen. Excuse, excuse the meows. I can't. Olive, stop it. It's easily one of my favorite books. I gushed about it for a long time, and I had a very pretty decently sized non-spoiler section. So check out the review if you want like a more in-depth, like about this. My other favorite is her other novel, God Shaped Hole. They have ties in to each other. It's not like, I don't know, the characters don't pop up from this book into this book. That's not what I mean by it, but there are like these small ideas. And so I feel like if you've read one of them, really go ahead and read the second one and you'll notice the, uh, the little ties, especially when she talks about fate. And I'm not quite finished with it. I have like, I think a little less than a hundred pages. So hopefully I'll get a review up on this soon. Also something I kind of want to pop in here, which is a thing that I don't like when people do, but I kind of feel like I need to do it. I try to get as many um, reviews of books up as possible, but I'm a student. Um, I have classes. I'm taking a foreign language class that is challenging. I'm taking a statistics class. Math is not my forte. So it's like I'm taking challenging things. So I'm going to try to get books up. But if you have any books that you could recommend to me that are maybe shorter in length, that you would like to hear me talk about. I would really like to read them. But also a small little segue between that and this, I started a new series, which is a really big commitment because it is a really big series, but they're very short books, so I'm sure it's gonna be fine. I can crank these out. I've already put almost, I'm gonna tell you what it is. I do this. I ramble before actually explaining. The Suki Sack House series by Charlene Harris. This one is Dead Until Dark. This is a borrowed copy from Megan. Thank you, Megan. I'm like almost halfway. <laughs> you were right. Um, but I've really been into True Blood. I have been, like I said, very sick. Hi. I've been very sick. And so I've been spending a lot of time in bed. I mean, to the point where reading, holding up a book is just challenging. So it's just very easy to mindlessly watch TV. I don't, it's an easier thing to do when you're sick. So I've been doing a lot of that. And the whole point to that was to say that I'm on the sixth season and this has all happened in less than a month. It's really been like two and a half weeks. That's being generous. Maybe it's been two weeks. Yeah, I've watched a lot of True Blood and I love it. I really love the first season and the fourth season, but anyway, I'm just rambling about it, but I'm very, very excited about this. And I think I'm going to finish this probably before God Shaped Hole, just because God Shaped Hole is in one of the more somberish parts and I just I felt like I needed something that was more like a candy read so I'm very excited about this series I love the writing style I'm excited for the fourth book really and the perfect transition I have like I said been watching True Blood so much of it and this is one of all of the seasons that are available I need to find a way to watch the seventh season because it doesn't come out until November and I can't wait gotta work on that Another show that I've really been enjoying is The United States of Tara. This is also on Netflix. It is about this mother with dissociative identity disorder and her family. And it's not just this very cookie cutter with, oh, dysfunctional mother. That's not at all what it is. It is really freaking hilarious. I'm not a big person that likes comedies. And I was thoroughly impressed with this. I laughed. It was weird and unique and why the hell was it canceled? But they it ran for three seasons. I got through it super fast. I think that was at the beginning of the month. I think that was all before I started re watching, watching True Blood. Now this one I did not watch on Netflix. This is I borrowed from Megan and it is The Secret Diary of a Call Girl. Um, it is 
very Sex in the City kind of vibe, but London and not with the multiple friends and then kind of their sex lives. It's very a story of a prostitute, but she's very, very likable and endearing. Uh, next, I'm going to talk about two shows that are currently on TV. Well, was currently. The mid-season finale just happened for the first one, and that is Outlander. I love this show so much. It has such a unique feel and it makes me wish that I read the book sooner but also glad that I didn't just so I can like watch the show and be surprised still. You guys have been talking to me about that book series for so long so thank you guys for that recommendation because just from what I'm seeing of the show I'm loving it so I think probably after the finale finale I might end up starting to read it. I don't know we're gonna find out. We're, we'll find out. I'm sure I will read it eventually. Now the other show, this one actually just ended as well, and it is Big Brother. Super, ooh, should I say this? Okay, for those of you who have not seen it, I will not spoil it for you because that is the worst thing, especially on finale night. But let me just say, I am extremely happy with who won. Extremely. This person is who I was going for the entire show. I didn't, like, say a she or a he, did I? Just this person. I'm trying very hard not to spoil. Happy day. This candle, which is really pretty if you look at it, and you can, you can't tell, but you can see through like the little leaves and the pumpkin and stuff when the candle burns, so it's super pretty. Um, this is a nature's wick candle, which means that it like crackles like the sound of fire. Um, I got it from Target. It's the pumpkin nutmeg thickening? Flickering glass. That makes more sense. And this is just in pumpkin spice, I believe. Hi. Hi. It smells absolutely delicious. It really smells up the entire room and not in like a really pungent way, but you can smell it and it's, I don't it doesn't feel disappointing when you light it. Like you can smell it, but it doesn't give you migraines. Stop trying to climb on the bookshelf, okay, dude? I have to bulk in mind meld with you. You have to understand this. Now into music, which is a very exciting thing because I get to tell a little bit of a story and kind of like an insert plug here type of thing. Um, I'm sure you guys already know that I have a vlog channel, Bookworms Get Silly, linked in the description, not gonna blub about it, but I vlogged this whole experience when I went to go see the Airborne Toxic event in Houston at the House of Blues. It was so much fun. I... <coughs> I'm trying not to die. That's what I'm doing. This is Courage. This won't last long because she has my to be held. Can you put up with the light? Don't look into it. It helps if you don't look into it. I know. She's very cuddly. She doesn't like to be held. She's like afraid of heights, but she's not because she climbs things. Back to point of the Airborne Toxic events. They're one of my all-time favorite bands now. Like, that's so crazy. Colleen Hoover introduced me to them, and I fell in love with them just madly. I love... I don't know how to pronounce his name, whether it's Michael or Mikkel or... Mikkel? I don't... I don't know. But, like, genuinely, as a person, I saw this post on Tumblr, I was going through the Airborne Toxic event tag, and it was a bunch of, like, screenshots of his tweets or something, and I'm just like, I like you as a human being. Uh, he was just talking about, basically, um, women's rights and other things along that area and line of feminism, and I just, I really appreciate it, especially when I see a man that really supports that, so I'm just like, yay, person points. But as far as like lyrically and the music and everything, I love that there's the violin. Oh my god, Anna is amazing at the violin and the keyboard and like seriously, what instrument can she not play? And I love that it almost has this symphonic kind of sound to it because of the violin and it's just a really unique sound that I haven't really found in other bands. It's that perfect medley and blend to it, this beautiful lyrical quality of it and then the instruments are amazing. It's not, I guess, for everybody. It does have a more rock and roll kind of twinge to it, and it's very, I don't know. It's, I don't want to say, like, aggressive, because it's not necessarily, but I don't know. Just look them up on YouTube. Some of my favorite songs of theirs that I have been listening to, um, I've been listening to Gasoline a bit more. I like the acoustic version, actually, of that. Bride and Groom is one of my all-time favorites. The Storm is probably my favorite song of theirs. What is it? All I Ever Wanted really liking that. There's just a bunch. And another one that they're really famous for is Sometime Around Midnight, which was so much fun to hear at the concert. And I'm actually going to throw at you like two lyrics or so just so I can kind of give example of beauty because grammar. If you die before I die, I'll carve your name out of the sky. And then from the song Duet, the lyric goes, 
and I miss you but it might just be this song and then one last bit for music I'm only going to talk about one song and it is kind of a weird name so I always have to for I always end up forgetting it um, my morning jacket Bermuda Highway I've been listening to a couple things I've been listening to older music and stuff that's very reminiscent of like Chris Cornell preaching for the end of the world or yeah is that what it's called preaching for the end of the world preach for a friend at the end of the world Chris Cornell anyway but it's from How to Kill a Rock no it's from God State Toll and uh, it was actually a song and I was so excited about that and so then I listened to that Pandora station and then I got um, Bermuda Highway and I love it it's very melancholy but it's beautiful and I don't know I've just been digging some older stuff all, and then just the Airborne Toxic event that's pretty much just been my month now I'm going to talk about two movies one of them is on Netflix and I'm going to talk about that one first and it is What Maisie Knew this movie made me cry. It was really good. There wasn't this grand plot. It's about this six-year-old girl who is kind of caught in the middle between her parent, her two self-serving parents. is a very bitter divorce. Her mother was kind of like a rocker, rock and roll chick. Then she has her father who is just this businessman that pretty much business is life. And he ends up leaving her, uh, the six-year-old girl, to, so then the mother basically just stays with her. But, I don't know, it hit close to home, like, my parents were divorced. There's really no way to explain it unless you've kind of experienced it. The joint custody, crap. It's not fun, especially as a kid. But the grace that the six-year-old just handled it all, her parents not picking her up. Like, they would, she would go from each house ten days here, ten days there. Then sometimes they would forget to pick her up for three days. And so then her mother ended up marrying this guy out of convenience just so that she could go off on tour and the courts would be like, oh, you're not just leaving your daughter with some strange man. Anyway, um, his character, it's Alexander Sack, plays Eric. I can't pronounce his last name in Swedish. I'm not good at Swedish. But he ends up being like this amazing father figure to her and he's the only one that gives a damn about her, but she also has her nanny who ended up marrying her father, but she ends up fighting. Anyway, it's just, it sucks, this poor girl situation, but she has these two people in her life that really do care about her. And I don't know, it's just the day-to-day -day life of it all and it made me cry a lot, but I think that might be because it kind of hit a personal spot. I just, I really liked it. If you feel like you want a good cry, go ahead and watch it. But now I'm going to talk about something that's kind of more, oh, that seems like a Hannah movie. Um, and it is As Above, So Below. I saw this in theaters. It was awesome. I was thoroughly impressed. I thought it was either going to be really good or it was really good as shit its fans. I'm just gonna cut to the action of it because the build up to the story is actually my favorite part of the movie, but I'm not really that great at explaining in detail like bit by bit because there was a lot that went on. But they end up going into the catacombs of France, which is where like dead bodies were buried. They end up going deeper and deeper trying to find this stone and shit starts happening and it gets scary. It, it's not a, um, a horror movie, I wouldn't say, necessarily. I would say it's more of a um, psychological thriller with that twist of it makes you jump a couple times. And the idea of it is scary. It was a really kick-ass movie. It was a psychological thriller. It was like going through the pits of hell kind of thing. It was very great. Great. I don't know. Grammaticalness. Like I said before, if you have any short books that you would like to recommend to me, then please do so in the comments. I really appreciate all your kind comments. I don't always have the time to reply back to them, but I want you to know that I do read them and I really do appreciate them. I appreciate your support and everything. I just, you guys are awesome. So many of you are like the nicest people. Anyway, like I said, check all the stuff down there in the description box. I have a couple links for things and I will see you guys later. Bye. You good? Okay. I'll carve your... I'll carve. <laughs> Who died? What'd you do? What the fuck? Bad cat. Ugh. You're not climbing up there. Not doing it, bro. Oh, you need off my back now. Please jump. I, no, you need to move. Well, yeah, that's what happened. This is what's happening. I need you to get off. Come on. Please jump. Stop standing there. Please jump. Thank you. I'm a jungle gym to them. Nothing more.